when all I see is the battle, you see the victory. When all I see is the mountain, you see a mountain. And as I walk through the shadow, your love surrounds.
Good morning and welcome to YCC Online. Uh, it's really good to have you with us this morning. Uh, thank you for joining us, uh, whether you're watching live uh, or maybe you're watching via catch-up, uh, but it is great to have you with us uh, today. Do hope you're watching live, uh, and if so, you can engage with the live chat. If you've got that open, it should be over here, I think. So do uh, join in on the live chat, say hi, uh, encourage one another uh, as we go through this service. It would be really good uh, to hear what you have to say on the live chat this morning. The good things that God is doing um, for you this week. Um, but as we start, before we're going to worship in a, in a moment, but I just wanted to acknowledge that, that we're not doing things how we'd planned to today. Uh, this hall was supposed to have uh, the Kairos kids in it today. We were supposed to be doing Kairos Live, um, and that's not been possible. Uh, I'll explain a bit more about that uh, a bit later, but it's, it's not how we were planning uh, to do this morning. And also, I just wanted to acknowledge that this week has been a difficult week uh, for many people. If you work in the NHS, uh, the pressures are just getting bigger and bigger uh, every day. We watch the news and see the numbers uh, going in the wrong direction. Uh, if you work in a school, it's been a particularly difficult week uh, this week as schools have had to, to readjust their plans uh, at very short notice. Uh, and so there's a lot uh, of people that are have had a difficult week uh, and many of us have got friends in the US uh, and I don't think any of us can have expected this time last week that we were going to see the kind of things that we saw um, over in the US this week. So for many people it's been quite a tough week. So before we carry on I wanted to, to read uh, a few verses from Psalm 40 uh, and then we're going to pray uh, and commit not just this time to God but let's pray for mercy um, for our whole country. Uh, so this is Psalm 40 and just the first three verses. I waited patiently for the Lord. He turned to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of the slimy pit, out of the mud and mire. He set my feet on a rock and gave me a firm place to stand. He put a new song in my mouth, a hymn of praise to our God. Many will see and fear and put their trust in the Lord. And that rock that God put our feet on is the Lord Jesus Christ. He has lifted us out of our situation. He's rescued us. He saved us. And he's planted our feet firmly uh, on him. We're safe and secure in our relationship with Jesus. Uh, so let's pray together. Uh, let's commit our time to God uh, and our nation as well. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you that you have rescued us. We thank you for all the things that we can praise you for 
because of what you have done uh, for us. And so, Lord, this morning we pray as we meet together, as we worship together, uh, although we're separated in different homes, Lord, as we join together to worship you, we pray that you would encourage us and lift our hearts. Lord, we pray for those that have had a really tough week this week. Lord, will you comfort and encourage and strengthen them? And Lord, we pray that you would have mercy on our country. Lord, will you hold back this virus? We pray for those who are seeking to get the vaccine out as quickly as possible. Lord, we pray that those, uh, those efforts would be successful. Lord, we ask that the tide would turn. So we commit ourselves to you today, Lord. We pray that you would be at work. Give us open ears to hear what you're saying to us. Open hearts to receive what you have for us and open eyes to see what you are doing. Uh, so, Lord, we, we commit ourselves to you and commit this time to you now. In your precious name. Amen. Amen. Well, I read there about putting a new song in my mouth. Um, I think most of the songs we're going to sing this morning are ones that we already know, but I'm going to hand over to the band now who are going to, to lead us. So, um, over to you guys. Thanks. across our lives, across history, 
in your word, we can see the great things that you have done. And Father God, you know that right now, um, this week has just been so hard for so many of us. Um, the shock of um, a new lockdown of cases, it feels out of control. The storm feels so big. But Father God, we just want to look back at the, at the times when you have calmed the storm, when you have seen us through, when you have been with us in every single situation. God, and this morning, we just want to declare, Lord, that we trust you. We know that you are with us. We know that you are beside us in this storm, in the boat. And when you stretch out your hand and say, be calm, it will happen. This week I've really felt a sense of being in that boat, being in that storm, and we're kind of looking at that light at the end of the tunnel. And I kind of felt that it's like we're, in the, we're still in the boat. We're still out at sea, but we can see the harbour. And we kind of think, come on, we're there, we're there, we're there, this is all over. But actually, we've got to get to the harbour. And this bit could be really tricky. It could be really, um, like, stormy, difficult to get through. But Jesus is in the boat with us. And we can rely on that. We know that he's with us every single step of the way. We're singing, oh no, you never let go through the calm and through the storm. Oh no, you never let go in every high and every low. Oh no, you never let go, Lord, you never let go of me. Sing that again, you never let go. We're singing, oh no, you never let go through the calm, through the storm. Oh no, you never let go in every high and every low. Oh no, you never let go, Lord, you never let go of me. Yes, I can see a light that is coming. The heart that holds on, and there will be an end to these troubles. But until that day comes, still I will praise you, still I will praise you. Sing, I can see a light. Yes, I can see a light that is coming for the heart that holds on. And there will be an end to these troubles, but until that day comes, still I will praise you, still I will praise you. We're singing, oh no, you never let go through the calm, through the storm, oh no. You never let go in every high and every low. Oh no, you never let go, Lord. You never let go of me. Cause she said that you will never leave. And I know that you are here with me. You say that you will never leave And I know that you are here with me Let's sing that again, you say You say that you will never leave No I know that you are here with me And you say that you will never leave You are here with me Cause I can see a light that is coming For the heart that holds on And there will be an end to these troubles But until that day comes Still I will praise you Still I will praise you
you say that you'll never leave And I know that you are here with me And you say that you will never leave And I know that you are here with me stories of what they think you're like and I've heard the tender whisper of love in the dead of night when you tell me that you're pleased and that I'm never alone you're a good good father it's who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am. Oh, I've seen many searching for answers. Far but I know they're all searching for answers Only you brought back because you know just what we need before we say a word You're a good, good father It's who you are It's who you are It's who you are
that song includes uh, some of the most important truth that I think we need to, to cry and grasp hold of. That God is our good, good Father. And that who we are is defined by his love for us. If we can just grab hold of that, that makes a huge difference. So thank you. Thank you, band. Uh, as everybody will notice, it's a stripped back band this week, so, but thank you very much. Uh, it's great to worship together uh, this morning. So uh, I've got some notices to, to take us through this morning. Um, and unfortunately, it's just going to be me talking. We haven't got any video notices to show you. Um, we've, yeah, it's been a bit of a week of kind of catching up with uh, new restrictions and everything. So we'll, we'll do our best. Uh, so firstly, uh, just to say that all the things that are happening in the life of YCC go out on the notices email that goes out on a Friday. Uh, if you don't get that already, then you can sign up via a link which I hope will appear at the, the bottom of the screen uh, shortly. Uh, and that will tell you all about what's happening in the life of the church. Um, do please uh, keep engaging with the chat. It's been great to, to read some of the comments that people have been posting up. Um, so thanks, Al, for, for kicking that off. Um, and thank you to everybody that's been saying thank you for, for Kairos Online, which happened just before uh, this service. We weren't able to do Kairos Live here in the building uh, this week, but Kairos Online happened uh, before the start um, of the service. So thank you to everybody that did that uh, and engaged with that. So lots of people have mentioned that in the chat as well. Um, we didn't have a choice about not doing Kairos Online. Basically, um, supervised children's activities are not permitted under the new restrictions, so we had to cancel that. Um, in terms of in-person communal worship for adults, technically, we are still allowed um, to do that. But as church leaders, we felt that with the rising rates and the levels of infection that there are, we just felt that it would be irresponsible to continue um, with in-person worship. So we've made the decision to, to stop uh, all in-person meetings. Uh, so the only thing that will be carrying on uh, kind of in person, if you like, uh, is the, the food bank um, at Cornerstone on a Friday. So do please keep remembering the food bank team um, in your prayers. They're kind of putting themselves out there for the benefit uh, of our community. Obviously, we're also still using, uh, doing the live stream. So uh, there's a few of us here in Burnhome at the moment. Um, and, but obviously, it's a stripped back team um, as much as we can do uh, to minimize the number of people that, that are in the building. Uh, so obviously, because the in-person uh, worship is finished, that means that if you are on one of the, the rotors, like the stewarding, the setup and set down, and cleaning rotors for Burnhome, then obviously we don't need your services at the moment. Thank you for volunteering, um, and we'll be back in touch um, as soon as we think we can get uh, in-person services back up and running again. And clearly, with the situation it is at the moment, we don't know um, when exactly that is going to, going to be. Now, although we're trying to, to minimize the team that are physically uh, here on a Sunday morning, we do still want to see uh, lots of different YCC faces uh, from the YCC family on camera. Uh, so again, we're going to be looking for uh, video testimonies. Uh, if you've got some news that you want to share with the YCC family um, and you want to do that, then we'd still love to do that. We'll arrange uh, somehow to get uh, you recorded, uh, and then we can uh, show that as part of the broadcast uh, on a Sunday, so we can still see uh, and hear from lots of different uh, ones of us amongst the, the YCC family. Uh, so if you have something that you'd like to share uh, like that, uh, then please do um, get in touch with one of the church leaders. That would be really, really, really good. Uh, also, uh, at the moment, we've been doing some safeguarding training. Um, lockdown is actually a really good opportunity uh, for us to catch up and make sure uh, that we're doing the training that we need um, to keep everybody safe. Uh, we've got some new training that's been rolling out. So um, everybody that, that should be doing the training should have had a link uh, back in November, December time um, to complete some online training. Uh, and then that's followed up. Uh, by a Zoom call. So if you've received that link, please do complete that training. Um, the, the actual online training shouldn't take very long. It should only take an hour or so to complete the training. And it covers both uh, safeguarding for children and adults because many, many of us in the church are involved in lots of different ministries. Um, and so even if you're just involved in the kids' work, you'll be interacting with other uh, adults in the church family. Uh, so it's really good to know um, about the adult safeguarding as well. So the online course covers both. So if you can get that done, uh, and then you need to book um, on one of the uh, 
uh, sessions for the Zoom training. There are three sessions left. So if you let Carol know, once you've completed the online training, let Carol in the office know uh, via the office email and she can get you booked on uh, to one of those Zoom sessions. Uh, and it just means that we can get ourselves uh, up to speed and make sure that we're uh, really up to date uh, with our safeguarding training. So that when we do come back and we've got uh, in-person meetings again, we're doing everything we can to keep people safe. So do please uh, complete that training. So we're back in lockdown. Um, we're back in a national lockdown. So what that must mean is that it's time for another quiz. Uh, so on Friday the 22nd of January, we're having another lockdown quiz. Uh, so it's time to dust off your team names, uh, get your team uh, organized, uh, get it registered. Uh, the details are on the notices email. Uh, and yeah, so you know, this is a great opportunity to invite friends and family um, to join in with something um, that maybe they wouldn't normally connect with church. It's a really great opportunity to get them involved. Uh, it's a fun evening. Um, we had uh, a hilarious time last time. So my father, who may be watching, uh, was absolutely insistent that po poinsettias came from South Africa, which apparently they don't. Um, but anyway, it's a great fun evening. Get your, get your quiz team. Um, organized, uh, get involved, it really is a good evening. So the next lockdown quiz, that's Friday the 22nd of January, so that'll be great fun. Okay, so in a moment I'm gonna be handing over to, to Simon, um, and he, he's starting a new series, we're starting a new series this week, looking at the one another statements in the New Testament, how we're to treat one another. And Simon's looking this morning at love one another. Well, one of the ways that we can love one another is to pray for one another. Um, and I'm just conscious that particularly with uh, the rising infection rates, um, we're aware of people within the YCC family uh, who have either got COVID uh, or who are isolating because they've been in contact with somebody who has. And I'm fairly certain that everybody that's watching knows somebody that uh, maybe has COVID at the moment or is having to isolate. Um, so let's just take uh, a few moments. I'm going to do a Simon and, and we'll put 40 seconds on the clock and let's just have a moment of quiet and bring to the Lord the people that you know that are in need at the moment, that need God's healing touch, that need his protection. Um, so I'll leave a few moments quiet and then I'll pray. So let's pray together and lift up our, our friends and our family uh, to the Lord. So Heavenly Father, we pray for those who we know who need your healing touch at the moment. Lord, we pray for your protection. We pray for a swift and a sure recovery. We pray against any long-term impact and effects from COVID. Lord, we pray that you would restore those that we know to full health and strength. Protect those who are isolating at the moment. Lord, we lift our family, our dear friends to you. We pray for your mercy, for your touch, for your healing. In your precious name, amen. Amen. Okay, I'm going to invite Simon up because he's going to speak to us in a moment. Uh, so I'll just pray for you, Simon, before you speak. And uh, yeah, let's listen to what Simon has to say to us um, today. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the word that you've given Simon uh, for this morning. Lord, we just pray that you would anoint him by your spirit and that he would bring your words to us this morning, that you would give us, as we were praying earlier, open ears to hear what you are saying to us, open hearts to receive from you. So Lord, I pray for Simon now that you would equip him and anoint him by your spirit uh, to speak to us. So Lord, we commit this to you in your precious name. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Simon. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Thanks for the opportunity to, to pray together and pray for those who we know are isolating or, or actually battling with this terrible virus. Um, Happy New Year. Yeah. 
Uh, I'm from the northeast, so I'm into first footing, and, and no one's first footed yet. I haven't had anyone come to the house, uh, especially no one with a piece of coal. And uh, like me dad, he'd be seeing, saying uh, Happy New Year to anyone he meets for the first time in that year. So uh, whether it's April or May, you know, if I haven't seen you, Happy New Year. Um, as uh, Also, this is probably the best way just to say thank you to everyone who's been praying for Dora Maria and I and uh, my brother and my sister and the family. Um, as you know, I, I lost my mum over the Christmas period. And, uh, you know, it's overwhelming when people send cards and push things through your door. Well, push the cards through the door. The flowers are left at the doorstep, <laughs> thankfully. Um, but so this isn't about who did and who didn't. I mean, you know, I don't want to do that. I just want to say thank you. Uh, the theme today is love one another, and um, we feel loved. We feel loved. I'm sorry it was a tragedy that for us to experience that, but we've known that love before many, many times in all sorts of different situations. But for those who've written such wonderful things, thank you so much. So as Mark said, we're, we're on a new season uh, series. Um, little pressed it too often, one another, love one another, or all the one another um, messages. And maybe if you can you know, screw your eyes up and look at the screen, you can see some of them there. Um, they're not all there, love one another, teach one another, honor one another, sing to one another with uh, what is it? psalms, hymns, spiritual songs, we've been doing that. Live in harmony with one another, confess your sins to one another. There are over 30 one another expressions in the New Testament. So that means you could write one down for every day of the month if that's how you want to do your discipleship. And every day you can say, oh, this is the day I'm going to honor someone or this is the day I'm going to encourage someone. We're going to be looking at six over these coming weeks. Love one another, accept one another, forgive one another, carry one another's burdens, encourage one another, and pray for one another. I think they're the titles just not necessarily in the right order. But there they are. Jesus started the craze. He did it at the Last Supper. And virtually every New Testament writer has, has, has invented their own one another under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Paul writes prolifically about one another's in his epistles. The writer of the Hebrews has two one another's in there. James has got a one another. One Peter has a one another. John records Jesus saying the phrase, love one another, twice in the Gospels, and then repeats it three times in his epistles. They are simple instructions, but simple doesn't mean easy. That's a little bit of wisdom I learned actually in Argentina of all the places to pick that one up. But simple doesn't mean easy. To be honest, the more complicated we make Christianity, the, the, the easier it sort of becomes. You know, it's easy to start doing research and read long essays on the internet and Google things and do work. You know, we can make a Bible study as complicated as we like if the resources are there for us to read. But to forgive one another, accept each other, carry one another's burdens. These phrases don't need explaining. We don't need to unpack these statements. Simple, but not always easy to do. I think in these coming weeks, I have this sense that we're putting the church into gear. Back, so I had to change my microphone because I realized I'm driving on this side of the road and I'm not in France or somewhere. We're putting the church back into gear yeah, some of you think, oh, I wanted some solid food. You ain't going to get anything more solid than this, mate. This is going to move the church forward. This is not back to basics. This is stuff for the mature believer, for the true believer. This is for those of us who have the courage and the faith to put our beliefs into practice. This is not for the faint-hearted. I feel John, the Apostle John, 
who writes in the New Testament, uh, prolific. He writes in every genre in the library. He writes a gospel, he writes letters, and he writes a prophetic section all by himself. He writes towards the end of that period. It's towards the end of the century. He's getting restricted in his movements. He, he's old. He's probably the last living one of the original 12. And I feel that when you read his spin on the gospel, his, his different approach from Matthew, Mark, and Luke, when you read the, the pain and the passion, the zeal that is in 1 John, and the amazing imagery that he brings to us from heaven to earth in Revelation. He's like grabbing hold of the church before the century ends to get us back into a place of where we should be in the heart of God. And that can be summed up in three words. Love one another. Paul does the same. It's in 2 Timothy. It's a painful letter to read to Timothy. Paul knows he's close to his execution, and he's writing this little letter to encourage Timothy, pastoring away there in, in Ephesus. And right at the beginning, he says, fan into flame, Timothy. That anointing, that, that anointing needs to get burn in your life. You need God's power and love and self-discipline in your life. Get back to the heart of the gospel. Hold on to the good deposit I've given you. And he gives him three metaphors. A soldier, a soldier doesn't get distracted by civilian matters. An athlete only wins the cr crown if they compete according to the rules. And the joy a farmer gets after all that hard work of going out into the fields day by day is to taste the produce firsthand. Folks, don't get distracted. Don't get pulled away from the faith that we have in Christ Jesus. Stay disciplined. Stay true. Don't wash it down. Don't, don't, don't get weak. I'm praying for you. And the first fruits, I'll tell you what, one of the greatest joys ever is to sit down with someone and just pray a prayer with them where they're letting Jesus into their life for the first time. And I've had the joy of doing that. Uh, my father was a great gardener. He loved, he used to watch that documentary in the 70s. What was it called? The Good Life. I mean, I thought it was a comedy, but he, I think he viewed it as a documentary. It was all about growing vegetables. And, and he would love to go into the garden and pull out that radish and eat it. And it has that hot, peppery taste as a good organic radish should have. And he loved the joy, all the back-breaking walking up and down the garden with cans of watering cans full of water. But to taste the first fruits. Folks, welcome to 2021. Don't get distracted. Stay disciplined. And enjoy the benefits and the fruits of kingdom ministry. Be an evangelist in season and out of season. That's what Paul says to Timothy. His final paragraphs of that letter, keep doing the work, lad. Whether you're in tier one or whether you're in lockdown, there is still good news to share. And I think John is doing the same thing when you read his gospel. And so when we come to this phrase, love one another at the Last Supper, John writes this whole evening differently. He's not ignoring what Matthew, Mark, and Luke have done. He's not dissing that at all. Yeah, don't get me wrong on this at all. But he has a totally different perspective. We've got the narrative. Vanessa read from Luke last week. You know, Jesus picks up the bread and breaks it. This is my body. He picks up the cup. This is my blood. But John puts the focus on activity and on drawing us into something, not on a reflection. He starts his narrative in John 13 earlier on. Jesus puts a towel around his waist and he washes his disciples' feet. The meal doesn't end with Jesus picking up a cup and saying, this is the cup of the new covenant it ends with him looking eye to eye around the table and saying, I have for you a new commandment. Jesus 
is about activity. Christianity is about activity. It's about being a community. It's about moving in fellowship and worship and evangelism and reaching out. God is an active God. And it started at the beginning of his gospel. In the beginning is the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. One commentator said he could have written, in the beginning was the verb. And the verb was with God. And the verb was God. Because God is a doing God. Genesis 1, in the beginning God created. And he creates all this stuff and animals and fish in the sea. And then in Genesis 2, he says to Adam, come in, come in, come. Look at all this stuff. Can you name it all now? He creates it and then he draws us in and we name. Yeah, what a privilege to give names to God's creation. John chapter 2. Jesus, I think reluctantly, is turning water into wine, but he's being obedient to his mom. And there's another thing of wisdom. Always, always obey your mom. She's normally right. If ever I get a chance to preach in a Catholic pulpit, <laughs> this is my text. John 2, verse 5. John 2, verse 5. I never have notes, and now I know why. Um, John 2, verse 5. It says here, his mother, Jesus, his mother said to the servant, do whatever he tells you. So again, Jesus is just about to do a miracle and he involves us. And the reason I want to use that in a Catholic pulpit is that that's the message. The message is, Mary says, <laughs> listen to Jesus. He's just about to raise Lazarus from the tomb. And what does he do? He invites us to come and roll away the stone, perhaps as an act of faith, before the most amazing miracle. John, in his age, as the century draws to a close, is wanting to re-establish the church as a physical and spiritual manifestation of Christ on earth. And so his gospel is different. It's about believing. And Greek word believe means activity. You can't just believe something passively. I can't say, oh, I think the ceiling's just about to drop in. I can't believe that. The only way I can truly believe that is if I'm running out the door screaming, the ceiling's just about to drop in. We're putting the church into gear and going forward. We're going to learn how to love one another, accept one another, encourage one another, pray for one another. John 13. John 13, verses 31. When he, Judas, was gone, so Judas has just left, Jesus said, now the Son of Man is glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will glorify the Son in himself and will glorify him at once. My children, I will be with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and just as I told the Jews, so I tell you now, where I am going, you cannot come. A new command I give you, love one another as I have loved you, so you must love one another. And by this will all men know, so I've changed my translation, will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. And Simon Peter asked him, Lord, where are you going? Which is a fascinating response. Imagine I got up here, second Sunday in January, a brand new year. And I say, folks, we're going to see the glory of God in the coming 12 hours. We are going to see breakthroughs and we're going to see God's glory. I'll be leaving, but what I want you to do is to love one another. Most people would have heard the second statement. <laughs> and that's exactly what happened here. Jesus makes three statements about glory, his departure, and love. And it's the one in the middle they're all obsessed about. And of course, for us, we don't resonate with that because we've never had the physical Jesus. We understood he had to go. We understand the cross, the resurrection, the ascension, and that he's coming again. But for the disciples, they panic. So most of John 14 is explaining that. 
John 16, Jesus has to go back to it. Look, I need to go. The Holy Spirit has to come. I've got to go. He come. You know. He does get back onto the subject of love in John 15, but the whole concept of glory, which is lovely, and that verse needs a sermon all of its own, uh, he doesn't get to unpack that until we get to John 17, and he starts praying to his Father. But the love which he returns to is a love of simply remaining in fellowship with God. I am the true vine and my father is the gardener. Where there's no fruit, I'll, I'll cut that branch off. Where there's fruit, I'm going to prune it back. But remain in me and you will get fruit. <laughs> Love one another as I have loved you. As God has loved you. God is not setting us some random homework to irritate us. He's simply asking us to be more like him. That's it. God is love. And if we're going to follow God and invite him into every area of our life, then we are going to love other people. One frustrated Jewish believer took the opportunity to ask Jesus, look, of all the laws, of all the instructions, of all the teachings, what's the greatest instruction? And strangely enough, on that occasion, Jesus answered him. It's not a clever uh, answer. It's, it's not shrouded in metaphor. It's a very straightforward answer. Do you know what? Love God with everything you have. Lock, stock, and barrel. Game, set, and match. Mind, body, soul, love God. And the second is like it, love everyone else. And it's not actually written as in the first is love God. And once you've got that, you can move on to the second one. It's the second is like it. In Greek, it actually implies the second is connected. It's, it's, it's part of it. You cannot fulfill the greatest commandment without fulfilling the second commandment. Because to love God is to love the God who loves the world. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world. <laughs> this is why, I'm, you know, this is my passion is, you know, in worship, when we've had extended times of praise, we need to be in a place of intercession. That, that's what must happen. It, it, it should happen by default. Because if we have been celebrating the greatness of God and trying to get our hearts in tune with his heart and hear the heart, hear the heartbeat of heaven. If we're trying to do that, then that's the God who so loves the world, who is weeping over Jerusalem and every other city. Love one another. It's what God does. And if we're following God, it's what we will do. Finally, the last example, before we do loads of examples of how we can put this into practice, is uh, the fruit of the Spirit. I, have I got time? I've got time, haven't I? Just about. I've always got this wrong, the fruit of the Spirit, and forgive me. And I think I, I still teach this wrong. I do Bible studies on this already wrong. I, yeah, I, I think we think the fruit of the Spirit, and let's put that up on, on, the, on the screen. Where is it? Um, Galatians, the fruit of the Spirit is love and joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. There's nine of them there, okay? I just assumed that this is like a module that the Holy Spirit is teaching, and it's a nine-week course on how to be better. Yeah? And like first week, learn about love. And he comes in again, second week, Holy Spirit turns out, okay, we're doing joy today, okay? I want to see smiles on your faces. We are, if, it's, if it's the last thing we do, we're going to do joy. And eventually he comes in. Okay, class, it's gentleness. And honestly, I want to see an improvement because goodness and kindness were, were, were laughable when we did it. And we are going to be gentle. And there's homework. That's not what it's saying. It says the fruit of the Spirit is this. If you have the Holy Spirit... That's who you are. I've got apple trees. <laughs> Here's a random phrase of the sermon. Almost like, I'm going to get an axe next year. Sorry. Um, I've got apple trees. I don't lie awake at night thinking, how do I do apples? How do I make apples? I've got apple trees. It's going to be so embarrassing. I need to work out how to do apples. How do you make an apple? The tree does it. All I've got to do is give the ground for the roots, 
light and a climate that isn't hostile to apple trees. The apple tree knows what it's doing. It's not going to give me a pear. Well, unless there's two of them. Um, but it's, you know, it, it, it's going to give me apples. It's for freedom that Christ has set you free. Receive the Holy Spirit. The fruit of the Holy Spirit is all these things, including love. We're called to love one another. How do we love one another? Remain in my love, Jesus said. This is not a chore. This is not a job that says you must do this. This is simply going to happen. Christianity works when we give the Holy Spirit space to be himself. But maybe we are in a hostile environment. Is God really welcome in our life? Are we going to see these things happen in our life? Or are we constantly going to be failing because we're not giving space to the Holy Spirit to change us? I laugh and I can't do a shout out. It'll be rude. But anyway, they don't live in York, so don't worry. They're from Colchester days. But I had some friends who used to invite me back to their house. Oh, come back to our house. It would be Sunday night. Say, come back to the house. We'll put the kettle on or we'll open a bottle of wine or we'll go out and get some Doner kebabs or something. God, that was living the life. They'd come and they'd bring me in. Simon, come in, come in. Make yourself at home. They'd push me into the lounge. Sit down. And the lounge was just full of clutter. There was washing in laundry baskets there was kids toys on sofas there was there was neatly stacked ironed laundry as well but yeah when they said sit down where and have i got permission to move things am i allowed to pick up the fire engine that beeps and flashes and all that or will some child suddenly scream that i've invaded their pack am i allowed to pick up the wash the washing and put it they said, make yourself at home. I thought, I haven't got enough clothes to lie on the floor to make myself at home. They were trying to make me feel welcome, but there wasn't anywhere to sit. Just let the Spirit speak to you right now. I believe. Do we really believe? And is it, has it changed the way we live? Are we making the Holy Spirit welcome? Is he truly welcome? Has he got space? Or does he feel like he's in a cluttered environment, a hostile environment? An environment that is not compatible with his values, an environment that's unhealthy, even unholy. Love one another. It's a simple statement. Just hold that slide there, and we'll get to the next ones through. Um, Sarah, thank you. So love one another. Well, it's in lockdown, but there's still, you know, the texts are working, the phones are working, the emails are working, the WhatsApp is working. The face. We can still communicate to each other, talk to each other, show that we care, show that we're, we're, we're still here and we're sensitive to needs. I put forgive here. There's going to be a whole sermon on forgiving one another. But I put that there just felt that for some of us what, listening to love one another, that's the stumbling block because it's someone we want to love, but we have to forgive them first. Forgiveness doesn't mean that it was all right for what they did. We're not saying they had permission. We're just saying, well, no, I'm not going to hold on to the poison anymore. Initiate. Don't be self-pitied. Don't, don't sit there waiting for someone to contact you. You make the initiative. Encourage someone, send them a text, send them a Bible verse. Care for them. Is there a need? Do we need to do a, a doorstep delivery if we're allowed? Affirm people when they've contributed. Thanks, band. Yeah, poor, poor Miriam. She was going to play the cello and she broke a string. That is so rock and roll, isn't it? Breaking a cello string, you know. And, uh, but brilliant. And the live feed said, yeah, the worship was gorgeous. Affirm people. Gifts. Gifts are always nice. Yes, they are. And if you're going to say something, think before you speak. And there's a little mnemonic for you. Can I have the band back? Is it true? Is it helpful? Is it going to be inspiring? Is it necessary? Is it kind? We're going to sing a song to end and reflect with that is full of Jesus. Because to love one another effectively we need to have that father love that jesus love that god love and so as we sing this 
without apology, this beautiful adoration praise song. Jesus, I love you. What, what, that's as simple as it gets. Jesus, I love you. As we sing this really simple song, in your head, ask yourself, how am I expressing that? How am I truly manifesting that? How am I receiving his mercy and showing him mercy to others? How am I receiving all his love and sacrifice, and am I sacrificing things for others? Jesus speaks about glory, his departure, and love, and that's where we end. We will see the glory of God if we put this into practice. We will see lives blessed and turned around. It might require a departure from us from center stage. What did John the Baptist say? I must decrease so that he can increase as we show God's love. I'm just going to hand straight over to the band because this is my final prayer for you.
earth within me sings I love you Always and forever I will love you You're all my heart and all Jesus, I love you Jesus, I love you Every breath within me Sings, I love you always and forever. I will love you. You're all my heart is You're all my heart is Jesus, we love you. And Lord, we pray that you would help us uh, to be open to your Holy Spirit, to be filled with your Spirit, uh, to show that love uh, to others. Lord, help us to do what Simon was saying, just to let you be yourself, Holy Spirit, to let you be you, uh, and for your fruit uh, to be evident in our lives. Help us, Lord, to be open to you, to be working with you, to be in step with you. Lord, we ask this for your glory. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us uh, this morning. It's been really great uh, to have you with us. Uh, thank you to those that have joined in with the chat. Um, I've been really encouraged uh, as I've uh, kind of kept dipping into the chat to see the things that people are sharing, uh, the things that people are thankful for. Uh, we are, yeah, really great for you engaging um, with the chat. If you'd like to carry that conversation on, uh, then in a moment when the service is finished, uh, there'll be a link on the screen to go to our Zoom lounge uh, so you can have, uh, get yourself a, a, a hot drink uh, and then join in with the chat on the Zoom um, to, to speak to some real people live uh, on, in, in Zoom. Uh, so it'd be really great. If you want to carry on that conversation, do please stick around um, and join in the chat um, on Zoom. But that's the end of our service. Uh, once again, thank you for being with us, uh, and we look forward uh, to seeing you uh, online again next week. Thanks.